I've never played a Mario Strikers game. In fact, I've never really played any kind of sports game in my life, and I've never had any interest or motivation to try. So, when I was invited to the Red Bull Mario Strikers Cup with a juicy cash prize for first place, I of course had to accept. Now, being the hyper-competitive ant that I am, I don't enter competitions to lose. The game came out on June 10th. The tournament was on the 15th. This meant I had five days to train. There was one key detail I forgot, though. Yeah, I forgot I was moving a thousand kilometers to a new house, but still, I got in as much practice as I could. So when the tournament day arrived, I started my stream and shared with my chat how many hours I had invested into the game. I've literally never played this game, and we're playing in a tournament an hour and 52 minutes from now. I hadn't practiced at all. Anyways, here's how I won. I had two hours before the tournament started, so I zoomed through the tutorial. And, and that was about it. In those 120 minutes, I literally just learned the controls. I think I had time for one practice match against some CPUs. They're so... coordinated! I was not feeling confident. But again, my goal is just to win one match. If we win one match, it's my first time playing the game, and I beat someone. With the modest goal of winning a single match, the event began. Oh, welcome everybody to the Strikers Cup. We have an incredible list of competitors here today. First off, Smash personality, Tony, with a competitive background in Smash Bros. I think there's already a foot forward here. He actually asked me, am I too good for this tournament? As if we weren't gonna bring other gamers. Speaking of which, we have Doug Doug in here. Doug Doug is experienced in so many games though. I think that versatility really is gonna transfer over to being able to adapt to a new game. Yeah, and when we talk about versatility, I mean, Look at Fur, an accomplished gamer, world class oh, yeah. speedrunner. There's nothing that Fur can't do when he puts his mind to it. And if he has put his mind to winning this tournament, then I think he has a chance at doing just that. Yeah, absolutely. Coming up after that, we have Kelpsy, Star Fox, speedrunner extraordinaire, link to the past speedrunner as well. Versatile gamer right here, always up to the challenge. But over coming up next, we got Mitch Flower Power, quite possibly the greatest Mario 3 player of all time. In terms of raw reaction time, I think Mitch is going to have a strong chance today. Yeah, absolutely. And then we're coming up, PK Sparks, a proficient man at a plethora of Mario games right here. Really, really going for the ultimate metagaming and figuring out all the strats. It's definitely going to be PK Sparks. Uh, now, speaking of uh, Mario Maker extraordinaire, incredible oh, player yeah. right here, Shoujo. I mean, tell me about the gamer Shoujo. I think the gaming speaks for itself. But... She is definitely one of the favorites in this. And then we have Small Ant as well. That's where it is. These are our eight competitors. After a brief tournament intro, the competitors were all ready and the matches kicked off. It was a round robin format where everyone plays against everyone else, which wasn't good for me as I knew there were some very experienced participants in the tournament. My first match was against Kelpsy. There was a brief moment of downtime before the game, so I took the opportunity to learn about my opponent. Well, how are you? How, are you excited? I literally played this game for the first time yesterday, so like, you know. Oh no, she has more practice than me. <laughs> Not even though, like two hours. Okay, like, I've okay. I've barely touched the game. We both have two <laughs> hours. I started my stream two hours ago. <laughs> Sweet. Lucky for me, she had practiced the same amount. I had a chance to achieve my goal right away and win just a single match. Here we go. Good luck. Good luck. And we began the sports. With the same in-game time as Kelpsy, I was hoping she would be as unfamiliar with the controls as I was. I quickly realized this was not the case. Yeah, that's right. Hit the wall, Bowser. <gasps> She's good! With the matches being only four minutes each, I now had only three minutes and 15 seconds to get myself together. For the next 60 seconds, I did my best playing defense to try and find some opening. And at the two minute mark, some good luck fell right into my lap. One of my characters happened to collect a Hyper Strike power-up thing, and if used correctly, it gives two points. I think that's two points! Let's go! I successfully pulled off the Hyper Strike, and with only one minute and 40 seconds left, if I just played defense, I would win this first match. Did I play defense, though? Nope. With my tiny lead and newfound confidence, I went on the offense. And surprisingly, that worked great. I got another goal, then another Hyper Strike, then another goal. I finished the first match six points to one. 
That was pretty good. I'll take it. Just like that, I had completed my single objective for the tournament. Win one match. But I won that match with quite the lead. You know, I didn't want to get my hopes up. But I thought to myself, how hard could another win really be? I'd find out in the next match against Shoujo. Okay, how much experience do you have? How much time? How many hours? I've just been playing since it came out. Let's go with like 15. Okay, so you, you only have like seven times the amount of experience I have. And with that incredibly concerning knowledge, the match began. Shoujo was clearly far better than me, taking a shot within the first five seconds of the match. Then another five seconds later. Then another. This relentless onslaught continued the entire time. By some miracle though, my goalkeeper, Boom Boom, was on his AI A game for three full minutes. Every single shot from Shoujo either hit the edge of the net or was stopped by Boom Boom. With 60 seconds of the match left, she got her first point and pulled ahead. Now, I needed a full two points to win the match, a seemingly impossible feat based on difference in ability. I floundered around for the next 45 seconds, but right at the end, while surrounded by Shoujo's characters, a hyperstrike power-up landed directly onto my Bowser. And right as an enemy bob -omb was about to detonate, I got the hyperstrike off. And he got oh, double oh, blue! Oh, he's gonna win off of this. He got Watch. the double blue! Watch. This he's looks like a final 10 in. second turnaround oh, perfectly. for small ant. If this goes in, which if my calculations are correct. Wow. Very nice. Oh my God. Have amazing. you ever yeah. seen anything I, like I it, Pooh? Oh my gosh, devastating moment for Shoujo. There were only nine seconds of the match left, and Shoujo just didn't have enough time to come back. Yup, GG's. Oh my god! I'd managed to win two matches in a row. Could I keep this victory streak going? Well, yeah, actually. My next match was against Mitch Flower Power, and he had about the same experience as me, and just like the other matches, I was saved by the Hyper Strike last second yet again. I was 3-0. All three of those matches were hard-fought wins, where I was 100% focused, and just barely snuck out a victory. The thing is, those three were probably the least experienced participants in this tournament. Everyone else I would face past this point was a category above. And so, the next match was a sobering snap back to reality. I was up against Fur. Now, he didn't have a multitude of hours in the game, only investing five or so since release. But he had to be some Mario Strikers prodigy or something, because most of his previous matches were complete blowouts. He had beaten Shoujo with 5 points, and beaten Mitch Flower Power 7-0. Matchups that, for me, I struggled to win, Fur handled them easily. I was nervous, but with 3 wins under my belt, maybe I was more capable than I thought. Well, I was about to find out. The match began, and right at the start, it felt alright. He was passing the ball around, and I was able to intercept a bit and get in his way. His skill was obvious, but still seemed beatable, even after his first goal. Ah! What a shot! Holy crap! I didn't want to let that one goal break my psyche, so I... Oh! What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, well, okay. Two goals. I had come back from this deficit in a previous match, so this is no big deal. I maintained my focus and kept on playing as best I could. How- he just- how does he- you have such accuracy! Okay, zero to three now. This is gonna be a little bit hard to come back from. And I was starting to doubt myself, but I knew the match wasn't over yet. I had two minutes and 40 seconds to bring this back. With some deliberate strategy and a little bit of luck, I could do this. Okay, finally, a single goal. I had interrupted Fur's uncontested scoring streak. Only two more points to tie. Well, that is if Fur hadn't scored again. First point wasn't a complete loss for me. In the moment before his goal, I had grabbed a Hyper Strike power-up, and it was still ready to fire off. So I took full advantage of the opportunity once again. I was doing it. Three points to four now. Just one more and we tie. I had almost two minutes to do it. But things didn't go as planned. Fur found a Hyper Strike of his own, and executed it perfectly, returning his three-point lead. For the next minute, there was nothing I could do. He kept me occupied, holding off his expertly spaced advances, and he beat me, 3-6. to six. For some reason, I just couldn't keep up with his play. He was too fast. And then I read a message from my chat. There's a sprint button? What, wait, you don't know there's a sprint button? Wait, what should... How useful is it? Yeah, so, while I was rushing through the tutorial, I missed the part about the sprint button. Could have been a good thing to know at the start of the tournament, but I digress. It was my first loss of the tournament, 
but it wasn't the end by any means. My three wins and one loss granted me second place on the current standings. My next opponent, though, was first place on the standings. A competitor that had been unstoppable so far. Kony, the favorite to win this entire tournament. In the previous iteration of the Mario Strikers series, Mario Strikers Charged, Kony was one of the best players in the world. Playing competitively for years, he had won every match in this tournament so far and didn't even break a sweat. This match was going to be a major turning point. If I won this, I'd overtake him in the standings, breaking his perfect streak, and give myself a fighting chance for first. If I lost, it'd be an extreme uphill battle, where I'd have to claw back wins to get to the top. So who would win? Kony, with years of professional experience in participating in the competitive underground scene of Mario Strikers Charged, or me, who just found out about the sprint button? Well, the match started and I immediately took control of the game. And I'm, I'm lying, he, he destroyed me. I literally had no chance. He beat me two to five. It's not even worth watching, he completely embarrassed me. So yeah, the extreme uphill battle time. Instead of being tied for first, I was now in fifth place. To get first in this round robin, I desperately needed to start winning again. The person to beat was PK Sparks, my next matchup, who had only lost to Kony so far. My work was cut out for me, as out of everyone in the tournament, PK Sparks had prepared the most, playing every day since release, determining the most optimal team composition and strategies for success. For this pivotal match, I knew I needed to play better than ever before. So it began. I was tackling left and right, stealing the ball, and taking as many shots on goal as possible. We fought for minutes, with each and every shot just barely missing. He took a shot, and I took a shot, caught by Boom Boom, hit the post. As time got closer and closer to zero, we realized what was needed to win. If one of us got just a single goal, that would be it. With six seconds left on the clock, PK Sparks took a shot and was deflected by Boom Boom. I had one last chance to get a goal. Right as the timer ran out, I took a final shot and was also deflected. For the first time in this tournament, a match went into overtime. Zero to zero. First point wins. The pattern continued though. He took a shot, then I took a shot. I knew I needed to win this badly to have a place at the top of the standings, and the tension was growing as we fought for an agonizing 90 seconds into overtime, when finally, PK Sparks finished it and scored. I had lost, and with that, my chance for first place slipped away. I had just one match left against Dug Dug, and so with all hope gone, I just decided to have some fun with him. We both picked a team of four toads and ran those little guys around the field, tapping the ball into the nets, and surprise, I lost again. Unsurprisingly, as someone who only had two hours in Mario Strikers, I wasn't that good at the game. But this isn't a sob story about how I lost a tournament. I told you right at the start, I was gonna win this. I'm sure you've been thinking to yourself, well, how does he win this if he keeps losing all the time? Well, I forgot to mention, the round robin matches were only half of the tournament. The group stage was yet to come. And for the group stage, if you weren't in first place, then the next best place to be was fifth. Let me explain. In this tournament, the round robin matches were conducted to find the four best players. Once the round robin stage was complete, those four players were made team captains. The team captains got to pick one partner to play the rest of the tournament with, and the captain in first place had first pick of the remaining four players. So by being in fifth, the odds were high that you would be picked by the best captain and have incredible odds at winning the whole thing. Unfortunately, I was in sixth, which put me in an awkward position. Shoujo was in fifth, ahead of me, and over the course of the tournament, she proved she was definitely better by a long shot. With Kony in first place, having the first pick, it was a no-brainer. Shoujo and win. I think if he picks Shoujo, I think they will win. I feel like Shoujo was very good at blocking hyper strikes. That, Shoujo's that's pretty good here. I knew I had to do something. I couldn't let them sweep the tournament together. Oh, it's thank it's you, Small Land! Oh my goodness! Yeah. It's not a bribe, actually. No, I'm just, I'm just giving him Ted subs because I, I like his performance. It's an incredible performance. Yeah, you gotta respect the performance. It would be rude not I just, to honor his performance. Uh, he's just so good, you know. Yeah, Small Ant, you trying to get a better. teammate? Is this your way of uh, buttering me up, brother? Here. Your gameplay was so good, you deserved it. <laughs> Thank you, Small you Ant. Can I go for- it's either Shoujo though. or Small Ant. And here's the, and here's the thing, like, it's definitely either one of those no two. Longer... Shoujo knows how yeah. to play the yeah, game. Incredible. Small Ant did well, give me gifties. Small Ant beat Shoujo? Pretty soon. Mm, might be Small Ant, bro. It's like throwing flowers onto a theater stage. Kony's performance was incredible. You're just honoring it. Exactly, yeah. Let's move on in uh, with Kony right now to see how we're looking on this first round pick. Kony, we've heard about the bribes that have been going on. Are the bribes going to influence your draft pick at all? I think what it comes down to 
I was going between Small Ant or Shoujo. Shoujo was great. Only player to defeat me. Well done. And played very well around Hyper Strikes. However, I did find out that Small Ant actually defeated Shoujo in their match. So I got to go with Small Ant on this one. That's my guy. How important this trophy is for you. Now, do you have a spot <laughs> already picked that for the... Have you seen the, how prestigious this trophy is? We're today? in, boys. Hold on. No. Let's go. Have you seen it? Action. The bribery worked. I like it. Small Ant throwing the ducats Not around. Not for the bribery. Maybe a little bit. Hey. Uh, and just like that, I was in. With a show of financial appreciation to help throw my name into the mix a bit, I now had a chance at redemption. With Coney picking me, though, this created a massive problem. Fur got Shoujo. Shoujo was the only person to beat Coney, and Fur beat basically everyone else. When Coney picked me, I honestly felt a little bad. My skill really didn't match up with our opponents. I really didn't want Coney to regret picking me, so I made a promise. If Coney is able to get the most points, he gets an extra 300. So we're gonna try and get an extra 300 for Coney at the bare minimum. There was an additional prize for whoever got the most goals during the tournament. Going into the group stage, Coney was tied with Fur on goals. I promised to do everything in my power to win Coney at least that prize. So my chat and I strategized and came up with a clever idea, a method to optimize the points Coney could receive. There was no time to try it out though, so I entered into the semifinals with an untested gimmick and a hope that I wouldn't let him down. Our semifinals were against Doug Doug and Kelpsy. We immediately put our secret plan into action. Coney scored almost immediately, a great sign. And then he scored again, and again, and again. In the two games we played against Doug Doug and Kelpsy, Coney was able to score 13 times. They didn't stand a chance. In a simple effort to get Coney some extra points, we inadvertently created a strategy that gave us perfect teamwork and communication. The secret to our revolutionary strategy? I played as Waluigi. That's it, that's the whole thing. It might seem simple, but this gave us a massive advantage. Here's why. In single player Mario Strikers, there's a really convenient mechanic where you automatically gain control of the character that has the ball. It allows the gameplay to be very predictable and smooth. In two player mode, however, this automatic switching gets very confusing because you never really know which player is going to control which character. Now, my chat made the realization that there's a setting to turn this automatic switching off. And before the semifinals, we proposed an idea to Kony. Okay, my chat had an idea. Uh huh. What's the best defensive character? Uh, Waluigi, by a lot. What if I go to manual and play only Waluigi? Then no matter who I pass to, it gives it to you. Cause you That's could play actually on a, a good idea. You could play it on auto and I could like collect items and other stuff and like play defense as best I can. Yeah. I mean if you don't mind that, that that would be the play. Yeah, cause then then you always know who's gonna be getting the ball. Like if you see Waluigi, it's me. If you see anyone else, it's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? That's a good idea. Absolutely, dude. With this strategy, we had full confidence in whom the ball was going to and were ready to fully capitalize on every opening our opponents created. This extended into the finals where we were unstoppable. Coney and I coordinating together like a well-oiled point scoring machine. Despite me being at a distinct skill disadvantage, that did not hold us back. We played three matches against Fur and Shoujo and won all three matches, with Coney securing another 14 points. And with the finals finished, we claimed our trophy and I fulfilled my promise and then some. We had won, together, the Mario Strikers Cup. Anyways, that's all I got for now. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and then I'll see you next time.